Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome friends. So, uh, as we have been talking about in one of our earlier classes, um, we are talking, we are, today's focus is on Iranian cinema, we will be talking about cinema from Iran, okay, one of the greatest uh, cinema, one of the be best cinema in contemporary times. It comes from cinema, uh, it comes from Iran and it has won the major film awards all over the, it keeps on winning the major film awards all over the world. So, Iranian cinema. Now, um, how many of us are aware of filmmakers from Iran? Here are some of the major players here, Darius Meherjoi, one of the earlier filmmakers from Iran, Mohsin Mahmal Baf and also his very talented daughter Samara. Uh, Mahmal Baf, who made a movie called The Apple when she was just 18. The Apple is about a group of young girls who are kept in seclusion by their patriarchal families and they are allowed to come out only when uh, they are uh, grown up. After that, it is their attempt to uh, get adjusted or accustomed to the society. So, that is The Apple by Samaira Mahmal Baf, Mohsen Mahmal Baf's daughter, Majid Majidi. Abbas Kiarastami, of course, he needs no introduction to people who are into cinema and uh, the very controversial Jafar Panahi. Among the first Iranian film that was shown internationally was Dariush Meherjoi's 1968 film The Cow. The Cow is about a farmer uh, in a village from Iran who loses his beloved cow and then he misses it so much that he starts assuming the identity of the animal and ultimately goes insane. Iranian cinema experienced considerable growth after the Islamic revolution of 1978 and 1979. Mm, still in 1983, a cinema foundation was established to encourage films with Islamic values. So, that is one of the key concepts that we will be talking about. Uh, Iranian cinema, the rule of modesty, the role of modesty, role of women in uh, Islamic cinema, the village films, the neo, the new Iranian film wave, those are the key concepts that we would be talking about. Now, as a result of uh, adherence to or insistence on Islamic values on screen, earlier you know there were some restrictions and now after the revolution there was major insistence on Islamic values, but still by and large filmmakers were free to make the kinds of film they wanted to do and freed from the burden of the past, especially the Shah regime. New directors such as Mahmal Baf and Kiarastami emerged with uh, a different kind of cinema. So, rule of modesty, they have to observe, they have to adhere to the rules of modesty. See, we have been talking about um, uh, eye line matching shots in cinema that is conventional uh, cinematic language. In the language of cinema chapter or lecture, we have been talking about all these things. So, there is something called eye line matching, a man looks at a woman, a woman looks back and they smile and we know that is falling in love. But um, in Iranian cinema, for obvious reasons, these things cannot be shown on screen. So, directors had to reinvent the conventional cinematic language and they do these things in a number of ways. So, what how they do it that is another uh, area of discussion altogether. Right now, I am just trying to give you a quick overview to uh, some of the exemplary Iranian films. Now, there is a film called uh, it is a Jafar Panahi film The White Balloon where we find uh, a little girl Razia and her father is absent throughout the film. We see the characters observing the rules of modesty on screen where um, men and women do not make any physical contact with each other. So, this is one uh, example that uh, you talk, you, you keep referring to the father, 
but he is absent throughout. So, the child talks maybe to the mother or just to the father, but both parents will not be seen on screen exchanging looks as would be so common in other parts, in cinema from other parts of the world, because that is how it is in Iran. Now, modesty laws also ensure that women must be veiled in all circumstances. Following the codes of modesty, Iranian filmmakers resorted to rethink cinematic language. They did this by using allegorical figures and resisting cinematic closures. Now, Iranian cinema blends documentary with fiction and encourages the audience to consider the relationship between what is fiction and what is real. It is also marked by an abundant use of color. Color is extremely important to express emotions and also sweeping landscapes and country life. So, those are the um, common features of Iranian cinema. Village cinema is also extremely important. Cine uh, cinema has been relocated from cities to the countryside. A significant feature of Iranian cinema is its setting. 90s onwards, the filmmakers have become preoccupied using actual villages look, uh, and villages and village locations rather than the urban settings. This helped avoid the rule of modesty in dress, where peasant women can be shown wearing large outer garments and covering their heads with scarves. Otherwise, with city women, uh, you cannot show these things, it would be very unrealistic. That is not the way women are in the cities of Iran, but uh, they had to show it uh, on screen in a certain women have to be rep representative on a screen in a certain way and they could um, be realistic with women covering their heads and uh, wearing large oversized outer garments only in rural settings. Now, new locations also enable the filmmakers to experiment with new techniques such as the use of mobile camera, natural light and natural sound. The films are also increasingly self-reflexive um, in nature concerning the role of cinema in producing the social world. Like the French Nouvelle Vogue films, the new Iranian films generally follow one character and make us watch the social spectrum through his point of view. There is also the feminist question, Iranian feminism interrogates the question of chastity and virtue in women, although it is done in a very subtle way. The new filmmakers constantly attempt to present women in a more realistic light, still the representation of women remains problematic with women as fetishized spectacles on one hand and as domesticated housewives on the other is difficult to, but still with all their constraints, they do try to interrogate the patriarchal values and raise certain important feminist questions. Mohsin Mahmal Bas Gabbe is a, a movie that uh, raises certain feminist questions. It is a magical and visually rich film set in the countryside. Um, the protagonists are an old man and his wife. They have a richly colored carpet that they cherish. Suddenly, a beautiful young woman called Gabe, she appears before them. She has woven the carpet and is the spirit of the carpet. So, the film uses color, character, fantasy, magic realism, reality, spirituality to cover or to unravel the mysteries of love, family and um, traditional rituals. Here is a scene from Gabe. Mahmal Bakhs Kandahar, it is a 2001 film. It combines actual documentary footage with a fictional narrative to show us the horrors of a land ruled by fundamentalists who use religion to suit their own worldview. The protagonist here is Nafas, a woman born in Afghanistan, but who flees to Canada and she becomes a successful reporter. She returns to her former uh, homeland or homeland rather to find her sister who lost her legs to a landmine explosion. As Nafas explores her way through the country, we get glimpses of a land ravaged by war, poverty and immense suffering. 
Many of us would be reminded of Bunel's surrealism when in a scene in Kandahar, artificial legs are air dropped from a helicopter to a makeshift medical center in Afghanistan. So, the screen is covered with limbs dropping, the artificial legs being dropped from a helicopter in the middle of a medical facility in Afghanistan. Okay. Very surreal. Now, Abbas Kharistami, he founded the film department um, of the Institute for the Intellectual Development of Children and Young Adults. Uh, where a number of the highest quality Iranian films were produced. He ran the department for five years and at the same time directed his first film, Bread and LA, in 1917, making educational films for children at Kanun, a non commercial organization, helped him with his basic approach to cinema. He was awarded the Palm Dor, a Golden uh, Palm Award, at the Cannes International Film Festival for his film a Taste of Cherry in 97. Although Kirastami made several award winning films early in his career, it was after the revolution that he earned a formidable reputation on the stage of world cinema, uh, where his ground breaking debut feature was Report in 1977. His masterpiece Close Up was made in 90, 1990 and later the poetic Life and Nothing More, that was a 1992 film led to Kirastami's discovery in the West. The West discovered him. He won uh, the A Certain Regard Award uh, at Cannes. The fact that Iranian cinema is considered one of the finest in the world is largely due to the efforts of Kirastami. I just mentioned Jafar Panahi's The White Balloon, which is a 95 movie. So, the film describes in real time the adventures of a, the world is real time adventures of a 7 year old girl and her older brother in the streets of Tehran. In 85 minutes, the little girl sets off to buy a goldfish for herself. On her way to the market, she loses her banknote and most of the film is devoted to her attempts to get her money back. The film is also notable for its well sketched characters, the child's perception of time passing and the snobbery of the bourgeoisie. Jaffa Panahi's recent film Taxi uh, stars Panahi himself as a taxi driver. So, this is again a common practice among Iranian filmmakers. They make films starring themselves. It helps them cut costs and it also helps in what I was just talking about self reflexivity factor, you know, drawing attention to the cinematic process. So, it stars Panahi as a taxi driver ferrying a series of characters around Tehran. Again, it has politically charged content like his 2006 film Offsite, which depicts a group of football mad schoolgirls trying to catch a World Cup qualifier despite women not being allowed into the stadium. Taxi features a storyline about a woman jailed for trying to watch a men's volleyball match. The Legend of Sai, which is a 91 movie, it is a feminist film by Tamine Milani. It draws on the literature of Azerbaijan province. According to the legend, A ah is a handsome young man who materializes to help those in need whenever he hears a heartfelt sigh. Milani's protagonist is a woman novelist suffering from writer's block, who with the help of A experiences the lives of four women from different strata. From a wealthy um, Tehrani uh, who feels unfulfilled by her life, to a poor servant, to a Turkman wife unable to leave the house without her husband's permission, to a rebellious student, the film offers a fascinating portrayal of a large of a range of Iranian women and their specific problems. Here is a sequence, a scene from the legend of a Sai. Abbas Kirastami's 1990 film Close Up is based on a real incident. At first it appears as a documentary of events leading to the trial of Hussain Sabzian for attempted fraud. 
The characters in the film are played by Kirastami himself, Mahmal Buff and real tabloid journalists, you know, journalists who are always on a lookout for a scoop. At the core, the film is an investigation to explore the phenomenon of the truth and Kirastami rightly points out uh, that in order to reveal truth, one has to resort to lying. Here is a scene from Close Up. I have been telling you about uh, Kirastami's A Taste of Cherry, which is a 1997 film. It was a, a much appreciated film. It is about um, a man called Badi. He is very elegant. He is uh, driving around in the deserted landscape, desert landscape in his uh, car, a Range Rover. Now, his problem is something very peculiar. He wants to commit suicide and he is looking for someone to uh, help him in his burial. So, the plan is he will kill himself, he has already prepared a grave for himself. The idea is that uh, who, uh, the man who helps him uh, has to cover his dead body. He will, he, the hero or hero will just kill himself, lie down in the grave and the helpers idea need is needed, uh, help is needed so that he can come and cover the dead body and perform the appropriate rites. That is all he needs and there will be some amount of money waiting for him in the car. Now, Badi uh, never behaves in an obviously despairing or miserable manner as one would expect him to. There are no cries or tears or lamentations and he never reveals the reason for his uh, desire to commit suicide. There is no music, the film has a very rough picture and sound almost in the tradition of Italian neorealism. The acting again is largely non-professional and the film has a documentary feel. The strong imagery in his films can be attributed to the fact that Kirastami who works in photography. Uh, which he exhibits in international venues such as Venice Biennale. So, uh, he is a, uh, he is a filmmaker, he is a distinguished photographer as well, he, ex he holds his own exhibitions uh, at international venues. So, therefore, the deep sense of imagery in Kirastami's work. Kirastami also cites the influences of uh, international filmmakers such as Jacques Tati, Roberto Rossellini, uh, Robert Bresson and Andre Tarkovsky. He is one of the most highly regarded filmmakers from across the world, generally shoots his films without a formal screenplay. Again, so much like Italian neorealists and French new wave filmmakers, his films often assume a semi-documentary form where he seems to state that fiction is not reality and reality is not fiction. The Wind Will Carry Us is again a major film by Kirastami, it is a 1990 film, 1999 film. The film borrows its title from a poem by the controversial Iranian artist Farooq Farooqzad who preached progressive political and feminist doctrine. In this film, the poem is recited by the unnamed male protagonist who is an engineer and photographer as he attempts to uh, build a telecommunication plant uh, some in some rural area of Iran. Um, being a journalist and a photographer, he is also interested in covering a feature story about uh, an extremely old woman. So, he's waiting for her to die so that he can capture the uh, mourning rituals among the villagers. It so happens that the woman does not die and the hero does not get his story. There is also a scene where he attempts to seduce a young village girl. He is preoccupied with notions of transience and temporality and the film is a study in contrast, reflects the villagers 
unsettlement by modernity, the village, again you know there is a dichotomy between the village and the city as embodied in the engineer, the ancient and the modern curiosity and the concealment of it. So, the hero is a specialist in modern communication, he is an engineer of, after all. However, his way of communication is impossible here in the village. So, again our attention is being drawn to the fact that uh, one has to uh, walk an extra mile in order to communicate with people who have been left behind by the forces of modernity. So, uh, I have been talking about Taste of Cherry uh, by Kiarostami, here is a scene from Taste of Cherry. So, again um, we have been talking where the wind will take us a taste of cherry. So, the car motif appears again in 10 which is a 2002 road movie again by Kiarostami that follows 10 conversations that take place in a car as uh, uh, the car is driven through the streets of Tehran. Where is the friend's house is the title of a uh, 1987 film by Abbas Kiarostami, it is again a child's story. Be, uh, this is important to note that many of uh, recent Iranian films are uh, post revolution Iranian films have children as protagonists probably because such subjects are less likely to involve social restrictions than would stories about adult men and women. So, uh, it is a gently humorous film about children's loyalty towards each other. In the small village of Kokar, Ahmad Ahmadpur and Mohammad Raza these are our young heroes, they are sitting in the local school room uh, which is a boys only school and they are listening to the stern admonitions of their teacher who is very strict. Raza uh, has not been doing his homework because of family problems and he comes to the class without doing his school uh, work, without his school book. He is warned that one more such violation and he will be expelled. When the school bell rings and the boys run outside, Muhammad Raza drops his workbook um, and in the uh, commotion that follows, Ahmad mistakenly goes home with his as well as his friend's workbook. Now, Kirastami then follows Ahmad's journey in finding Raza's home, therefore the title where is the friend's home. Majid Majidi is another important filmmaker. He, uh, his debut as a director and screenwriter is marked by a film called Baduk, B-A-D-U-K in 1992 uh, that was presented at uh, Cannes festival and it won several awards nationwide. Since then he has written and directed several films that have won international recognition. His most notable film is Children of Heaven, a 1997 film that won the best picture at Montreal International film award and it was also nominated for best foreign film at the Oscar Academy Awards. The Children of Heaven is a concern with a 9 year old boy Ali and his 7 year old sister Zahra who live with their parents in a meager one room flat in South Tehran. Ali has been sent to have his sister's shoes repaired, but on the way home the repaired shoes are mistakenly taken away by a city rag picker while Ali is shopping for some uh, groceries. Now, this establishes the problem that drives the rest of the action. Ali is horrified by having lost the shoes knowing that his family cannot afford to replace them and that he will be severely punished for his error. He and his sister uh, take the only option that uh, appears um, because uh, they attend school at different times, they must share Ali's sneakers without telling their parents. The film can be seen in the tradition of the neorealist cinema of Vittorio the Sita's Bicycle Thieves and also Satyajit Ray's Pathir Panchali. Here is a scene from The Children of Heaven. So, um, despite the restrictions imposed by the fundamentalist regime, most Iranian cinema has managed to find a distinct voice in world cinema and is making profound comments on the human condition. 
From Iranian cinema, I would also like to give you a quick overview of the cinema from the Middle East uh, and this part of the world has also been making several important films. In recent times, the tensions between Israel and Palestine has given birth to some of the best films to come from that region. Elia Suleiman's Divine Intervention in 2002 reflects at the situation at an Israeli-Palestinian checkpoint and is dealt with black humor. Uh, there is another film called The Syrian Bride which is also set in no man's land between checkpoints of Israel and Syria. Um, there is a filmmaker Amos Gitai who made Free Zone in which three women an American, an Israeli and a Palestinian, they become traveling companions in Jordan. Thirst is another uh, great movie by Taufik Abu Well. It is about an Arab family living in an abandoned village in a dusty corner of Israel. So, great cinema from different parts of the world and this was in continuation with our discussion of traditions in world cinema. So, uh, please take a quick look at uh, reading list, not too much. So, thank you very much.